What's up everybody? Uh, Ike Stevens here, KE5 WDP. Uh, this is a 2021 Chevrolet Silverado Trail Boss Custom. And the reason why I say custom because there is a difference, at least between the 2021 Trail Boss Custom and the 2022 Trail Boss LT. Both of which I have. I have that's the custom, and there's the wife's truck, right? She leaves me outside. She leaves me outside where she's got to park underneath there. Well, anyway, this is I'm turning in this into a uh, chase vehicle for storms and for storm spotting. And one of the things that I wanted to do was to make sure I have a ham radio inside here. That's like to me, that's the first thing you need, right? So. Uh, I got around searching on on the YouTubes and everything and I found this I, I saw another guy do a video and he's got a 2022 trail boss and um, He bought a compact Tana this thing right here Okay um, And the cool thing about this is is that there is no drilling that's not a mag mount or anything like that now you can use this for a mag mount but I didn't want to, you know, put that up on the truck. So any kind of that. So, but there's a bracket right here that is custom for the Chevy Silverados and GMC Sierras. And uh, I'm going to show you that right now. This right here fits right here. This little bracket right here is um, created just for this, and it you just pop this bolt out okay right here put the bracket in put the bolt back in screw on the antenna just like that now you guys you know want to know well how do you get the, uh, the, the, the the coax into the cab of the truck how do you go through that firewall well I tell you what, it's pretty easy, pretty easy, a lot easier than what you think. You think, you know, these newer vehicles, you know, whatnot. Um, this is actually pretty easy to do. Chevy made the made it real easy on both sides, on the passenger side and the driver's side. And uh, with this, I actually have the uh, antenna going in through the passenger side because I've fed my power through the driver's side and what am I talking about what side what are we talking about here so if you look right over here if you see where that where that uh, wire goes in this one right here this one that's my power line right there is you know the um, positive and negative and I just fed through there and um, on the custom model on the custom model it's actually really easy really really easy just to poke right on through you don't need to you know poke through any kind of foam because let me show you the difference between a 20 uh 21 chevy silverado trail boss custom and the uh and then the 2022 uh, Chevy Trail Boss LT. This is the 2022 Trail Boss LT. Definitely looks a lot different than the uh, custom. So finding finding the hole is uh, you'll probably have to get uh, something to poke through this padding. So this coax comes out right here. Underneath here, it's hard to see, but it just pokes right on through. It's right on through, just like that. Up and through here, you don't have to drill no holes. You don't have to redo the coax. Comes out just like that. And very convenient. Right there is uh, so what you do you 
cut this off. It's kind of hard to get to. It comes off just like that. See? Just cut it off with some knife or scissors or whatever. All right? And then you can feed your coax straight through there. Straight through there. Sorry, it don't look that well. What I'll, what I'll do is uh, I'll kind of seal that up with uh, electrical tape. The uh, LT definitely has more things in the way. You know, not only does it have the padding, but it has more stuff, right? The LT, if you guys don't know, if you're not into Chevys, the, so the custom Trail Boss, okay, has, it's not a, like a base model. It's not like what you call what, a work truck. It still has, I'll just show you, still has the little digital thing right here. It does not have the uh, dual climate control, okay? but has a four-wheel drive and has all that number you see that this is uh the 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 custom okay the custom trail boss and this is the lt trail boss now you can't really see because it it's all black in here and tinted windows and just really you know underneath this awning but uh as you can tell there's way more bells and whistles in this truck in her truck compared to mine now saying that you could still get the wire through the firewall you just have to do more work to it now i would show you but i'm not putting any radios in my wife's truck that's not my rule that hurts that's her rule so this bracket just fits just like that see you can hardly see it and it looks really good it's like really it's really low profile right um now just a minute ago i took the uh truck into town to go and get get it washed i, I go through a uh, automatic wash one of those things and i was really concerned about the wire here going through that wash and i may go ahead and uh maybe take something to uh hold that in because i go through there quite a bit and i just don't want anything happening to that little bitty coax right there i may i just don't like the looks of having electrical tape but if that makes it where it protects it a little bit more now i may just go ahead and do that Yeah, and I really like how this looks. Now, I did try it out on some repeaters. I don't have another com uh, another antenna to compare it to, so I may go and buy another antenna. Got a ham fest coming up here in about a month, and uh, I may go buy an antenna and just maybe just do a comparison between the two antennas. I like this one because it's just not too obvious, right? It looks looks clean, it looks sharp. And um, kind of matches the truck real good. You know, if you have a big, taller antenna, even though for the radio guys out here, you know, that looks good to us. But, you know, I just kind of wanted to still kind of have the, you know, keep this really sharp. And um, and this, to me, looks, looks really sharp. It's, again, low profile and all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't really go through any kind of garages or anything like that, so I don't have that issue, so... If I decide to go get another antenna, I will. Now, I'll show you my radio setup, who, how I have in here. Right now, I've got this Kenwood TM281. Right now, it's Velcroed, okay? And so I have the wires out here, but that's only temporary. Uh, I got a mount coming in and I'm gonna mount it like right here. So when I, it, you know, when I get that mount in, those will be the only holes that I drill will be right there so and then i'll hide the wires underneath here this this comes off but for now it's just velcroed to the carpet right there but that's only temporary my mount will be in here this next week or so 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 yeah uh and that's an old radio it's a good radio kenwood but um 
my plan is to get a uh an, you know, upgrade my radio system in here now when i go and uh upgrade i'm probably going to upgrade to you know something that does digital and stuff like that um something that's easy to program so i'm looking at a different few radios i'm a yezu guy but i also like kenwood because kenwood is to me kenwood is easier to operate uh, going down the road and when you're trying to find a repeater um, I've noticed that this Kenwood and I've had this Kenwood for a number of years in a truck and you're trying to go down the road and find a repeater this Kenwood is it but like I said I'll probably get a Yezu though um, so I, I, I don't know I don't know right now it's just making sure I get radioactive in here and that's the first thing uh, the next radio I get I'll start researching on and stuff like that uh the i don't know a model number but there it was a radio i saw it cost like 500 dollars or whatever and that may be the route i go because everyone's going digital right and i'm kind of that guy that you know don't care about all that digital stuff but when you're having to get out here and all these different repeaters and they use different things like you know all the gps and that's another thing is having gps on it that's probably one of the biggest factors that way um, you know, I, I can assist in uh, weather net, sky warning, and things of that nature. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, and I appreciate. I uh, forgive me. I don't. I didn't see the. Uh, I forgot the guy's channel name and his call sign, but I will link his video. The guy that, because here's the thing: everything that you see besides the radio, the guy uh, that I saw the video on. He had a link to that antenna, to the bracket, and to the coax. And and I got on all those links and it went to DH, DX Engineering. And um, ordered all of, them, all of them from DX Engineering. And uh, besides the bracket for the radio. Um, and so, and the, so it's basically the exact same setup. So I'm gonna leave a link to his video if you're interested in the LT version and how he got that wire through the fire firewall. But the, for the custom, it's super easy. But again, the custom does not have as many bells and whistles as the LT does. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we'll have more storm chase videos here uh, later on in the spring as we get active. Um, and then I'll let you guys know the updates on the radio that I get, any kind of setup situations that I have on the uh, on the chase truck. I gotta name it. We're gonna have to figure out a name for it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Seventy three.